Hello everyone and welcome to the latest and weekly updates and a brief quick review of everything that occurred this week in the Star Citizen universe. I'm Dark Hour 717 and before we get started, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Help me out with that YouTube algorithm as we continue to work towards hitting that 5,000 subscriber mark. Also remember to stick around to the end of the video to see how you can get entered to win a Toby Eye Tracker 5. As always, we saw the latest edition of This Week in Star Citizen on Monday bringing the announcement of Stella Fortuna. Notifying us that this will launch on Wednesday and really gave us all something to look forward to with this yearly St. Patrick's Day celebration. Aside from that, this contained really the usual schedule that is always posted. On Tuesday, we saw the latest in the lore post, and this was an interesting one. We saw Showdown, a better today. And this is in reference to Imperator Addison signing off on legislation that would reduce the restrictions on AI research and development. The story itself follows an interview between Una Glidewell and Mahir Lamond. Conducted by Iria Quint, Yuna, who is an advocate and believer of what AI advancement can offer, discusses the pros against Mahir, who is against the restrictions being lifted or weakened in any way. As the conversation touches on the known loss of life due to the development as proven by incidents in the past, including one tied directly to Stella Fortuna in which the AI was to blame for the loss of 4,876 lives, and also the Lemming Car disaster, which claimed the lives of 12,456. Yuna's debate is that the big picture shows that these are acceptable losses and all the future good that will come from the advancement in AI. Using the lack of progress in ship development as an example, also Yuna argues that the current technology would exponentially progress with more use of AI technology. This is a very interesting story and conversation to follow as some actually represent some of the current belief of what AI can provide and possibly cause. I would definitely recommend checking this one out even if you're not so much into the lore. Wednesday we had our next release of the Roadmap Roundup and this week was actually pretty light as I would expect with patch 317 being just around the corner. What we did see is that the EU Sandbox 2 team was created merging the Planet Content team along with the Mission Design and AI Content team. And also in the progress tracker, we saw the removal of the terrain snow displacement card and destructible environment card. And that's only until further dates to focus on the foliage shader and ocean shader improvements. By doing this, it's really going to continue work on internal tools to allow for far quicker generation of planet terrain, foliage, bodies of water, and much, much more. Wednesday also marked the launch of Stella Fortuna, in which part of the celebration is to honor those who were lost in the 2125 incident on Mars, in which those 4,876 colonists lost their lives during a terraforming accident. After investigation, it was shown that the AI was at fault for the loss of all those lives, and Stella Fortuna also celebrates fortune, boldness, and embarking on new business ventures. They do this through celebrations including festivals, fireworks, feasting, and overall just one big party. Colors of celebration tend to be green and gold, and that's not surprising as this is really modeled after our own St. Patrick's Day celebration. And this year for Stella Fortuna, we see that they've made quite a few things available. In the paint category, we got the 400i Stella Fortuna paint at 11 US dollars, 600i at 16 US dollars, and of course last year's MSR at 11 US dollars, and you can get all three for 30 US dollars as a pack. As for available ships, we did see a limited sale through three waves that made the Connie Emerald Phoenix as well as the 890 Jump available, though those are over at this time and those finished up on Thursday morning. As far as available single ships though, we see that the celebration this year is all about Origin. And every Origin ship is available and unlocked with the exception of the 890 Jump, X1, and of course the G12. Some of these even come with paint combos like the 400i at $261, US the 600i Touring at $451, US and the 600i Expedition version at $491, US and of course last year's MSR with that Stella Fortuna paint at 271 US dollars. Now some packages are also available and don't include a game pack. We have the Fortuna Legends pack, which is only available as a war bond at this time, that contains the Connie Phoenix Emerald, P72 Emerald Archimedes, the Cyclone MT, and of course the RSI Ursa Rover Fortuna. And that was $440 war bond. The non-war bond version, like I mentioned, is out of stock. Then we have the Fortuna Party Pack, which takes that Fortuna Legends pack and adds in the 600i Expedition, as well as the 400i. Now, war bond on this one is $1,300 US dollars, and again, the non-war bond is sold out and no longer available. 
So though the limited sales are closed, now there is still a way in which you can get the Connie Phoenix Emerald if you so choose. I imagine we'll see the sales continue through at least the weekend and then hopefully early next week we'll get an idea of when these are going to close off. Thursday we saw the Inside Star Citizen favoring the bold. This episode touched on the looting for 317 and the changes that are coming with it. Along with this also the ability to sell the items that you loot. Now unlike 316, the lootable items are now going to be more tailored based on the location in which they're found. Also being introduced is the concept of rarity consisting of common, uncommon, and rare type of items. And really to create this rarity, we see that they've actually removed some of the items available for purchase in shops. The rare items will have a far less spawning frequency, and selling is now going to be implemented with kiosks in the shops. And that's going to be with a new kiosk UI as well. You're actually going to be able to sell items to a shop if they carry that category of item. So you're not going to be able to take an armor set over to Live Fire Weapons, sell it, and get some AUEC for it as they don't carry armor. Now this will utilize a tier-based pricing system starting at 90% of the value that they sell the item for, dropping down to as low as 50% if they're overstocked on it. If they don't carry the item at all, then selling it will default to the 50%. And this will be in regards to, say, you take an FS9 to a shop that doesn't usually carry FS9s. Now, the most valuable thing that you can sell to any shop, of course, is going to be the Pico Balls. But they did not mention what price these will sell at. Anything that you do go to sell that has attached components like scopes or lights or lasers, you're going to be able to strip those down during the selling process so you can keep anything that you've equipped on there that you don't want to get rid of. Now, be aware due to issues with stacking, if you don't want to sell the full quantity of that one item that you have in your inventory, whatever you do, do not hit the quick sell button as this will basically sell off all the entire quantity of what you have of that item. Proceeding through the episode, they also touched on the current state of medical gameplay. This segment was practicing medicine and they discussed the overall impression of the medical gameplay and the positive response it's received. Now some fixes for 317 are on their way. They discuss the rate of bleed out that occurs as well as the occasions of insta death. The bleed out has been adjusted for 317 and insta death should be removed. So, no more taking injuries through being shot or stabbed and bleeding out faster than you can pull out a med pen to take care of the situation. Also, be aware that if you do log out in a degraded medical state, you'll no longer be healed on your next login, but in the same state as when you logged out. This, for the most part, is going to be medical persistence that they've created. Meaning, if you only have 30% of your health left, 20% of your hydration, and 10% of your food consumption, when you log back in, those are still going to all be at those same levels. Some bugs have also been corrected, such as hitting your own corpse, no longer resulting in a crime stat. I can't say it's ever happened to me. I don't tend to go after my corpses, but I have heard a number of people that have experienced this. And finally, of course, they spoke about the future with permadeath as well as the process of next of kin and also the replication degradation each time that you respawn. Overall, this was really a great episode and really gets me excited for the things that are coming down the road. Finally, on Friday, we did see Star Citizen live or in this case, not so live with an episode all about 317. And what I mean by that is it was actually a pre-recorded interview between Jared and Todd Pappy, the live gameplay director for the Star Citizen PU. They did start with a mention of the ATC One Touch request, noting that it's going to default to whatever ATC is closest to you. So if you're in an area that's got a garage and also the ATC for ships, much like New Babbage, it's going to automatically default to the closest one. After that, they got into refueling and answering a couple of questions and regards to this new feature coming in. They discussed fuel rebalance, and one thing that was asked is, will the fuel be rebalanced for the quantities or how fast it consumes throughout the ships? And Todd Pappy did answer this by saying there is gonna be a rebalance with 317. But as always, he did stress that this is not the final iteration as it's gonna be an ongoing project to work to find the sweet spot for fuel use to require refueling but not make it overly annoying and an overly repetitive action. Mentioned later was also the eventual state of different fuel grades, also much like what we have today, and this will be a ways down the road and not anything coming anytime soon. 
In regards to the refueling, they also mentioned that NPC missions for refueling will not be available in 317. And also the ability to launch a refuel beacon is not going to be in this patch, but will come at a later patch as they work on some things to make that happen. So pretty much, hopefully somebody in your party's got a Starfare and you can call them up to avoid having to put it out in the in-game chat and risking a pirate heading your way. After that, they got into the whole A and brought up the expansion and logging out and back in and whether it's going to auto compress and return to its default state as close when you have cargo attached and possibly lose that cargo. Todd Pappy addressed this by saying that they did do a fix that will keep it from closing when you log back in so that it will stay expanded, your cargo will be safe, and you won't lose all your hard work. And getting into selling the lootable items, they did address selling pledge items and the fact that this is not going to be possible. They did this purposely, obviously, because they don't want people to sell all their pledged armor, guns, and things such as that. Get a UEC for it, do a character reset, get all those items back, and then go in and sell them again, and just repetitively doing this, building up a large amount of AUEC in their bank. I think this was really a great idea because I'm sure somebody already thought of this and it's good to see that they're thinking ahead of to how people can take advantage of the situation. After that, they did address the question about the availability of buying newly released ships in game and stated that Cyclone MT and the Archimedes will be available in 317 and the Cuddy Steel and the Hover Quad are slated for 318. Outside of that, no other ships being made available to purchase in game were mentioned. Top Happy after that also goes into kind of a background in the changes between becoming more Squadron 42 focus and how this differs than before and how not to really take it as things are not progressing, just that there is a more balanced approach to help provide what Squadron 42 needs to advance and progress along. And though at times him and his team do find it frustrating, they are able to work around this and be able to continue putting out new items to the PU as well. And one of the big benefits they pointed out to this is the fact that features will be released in the PU providing for a smoother, less buggy release as many issues will be resolved from the Squadron 42 side before they put it into the PU. And this is definitely a big bonus for us because we all know how it can go when a feature comes in and it's just riddled with bugs and unplayable. Todd Pappy answered a question about the asteroid scanning after that, and he did mention that there is a fix that they're doing with 317 to help with that, but it's not the final resolution. Because a large portion of the final resolution is gonna be dependent on server meshing, but they did do a fix for 317 to help out with the situation. After that, they got into a discussion on the desync and improvements that were brought into the Evocati patch. And what Todd mentioned that they found is that the desync is more about time and not exactly position. And the fact that the more that you move around, the more that time gets off. What was done is more time synchronization though, and this could possibly have a side effect of when you're viewing something that it could be a little bit more jittery. But they are working with this patch and going to be making adjustments as they can to make it that much better. And that was about it. So a fairly knowledge-filled interview. I definitely recommend checking it out as there's a lot more in there than what I can cover. I hope you enjoyed this weekly update of the latest and greatest from the week in Star Citizen. Don't forget to get your entries in for the YouTube exclusive giveaway of Adobe Eye Tracker 5. All you gotta do is subscribe and comment on any video here before April 1st to be automatically entered. Also make sure to check out Twitch where I stream every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and you can get entered into our Twitch exclusive giveaways just by following over there. And this month it's a Thrustmaster T16000 HOTUS. Both of those giveaways will be drawn on April 1st. And if you would like to support the channel, check out the merch store and Patreon. I greatly appreciate it as this is what allows us to do the giveaways and give back to the community. You can also just hit that join button up at the top there and get a membership for as little as 99 cents per month. But personally, I want to say thank you to everybody out there for checking out the video. Please be safe and we will...